Okay, so for today's demonstration, we're going to be walking through a single use case from end to end within NetSuite's revenue recognition. And we're going to be starting off on the sales order, which is what we're looking at here. Now, to give you some background before we dive in, uh, what we're actually selling as part of this contract, we have 200 hours of professional services, which was discounted at 15%, as well as 10 SaaS licenses. Now, of course, the sales order would be routed through an approval workflow based on best practice. And once that sales order is approved, we're going to have a revenue arrangement get automatically created from that sales order, which is our source transaction. Now, you can think of the revenue arrangement as your revenue contract. It holds all of the revenue information for this particular order. And all of this information, again, came from our source transaction as well as the default settings assigned to some of the items, which I can talk about a bit more. Below, we have our revenue elements. We have two revenue elements, one for the professional services and one for the SaaS license. Now, each revenue element really represents our independent performance obligations. So that's another way you can think of the revenue elements. Now, the first thing that I wanna point out is that revenue allocation, it is automatically occurring and happening upon creation of our revenue arrangement. So right away, I'm able to review how much revenue was allocated across each of our elements, our revenue elements. And this can be a huge time saver, right? For those of you that are performing these calculations manually in Excel. Now for each element, we can see a number of things which I'll highlight and then I'll talk to. First thing that we can see, what was each item sold for? otherwise the discounted sales amount. Next, we can see what the calculated fair value amount is for each element. And then how much revenue are we going to be recognizing? And again, that's because NetSuite's automatically allocating your revenue. Okay, well, that's great. Many customers and prospects will ask me, how do I get more visibility in, into how NetSuite calculated and arrived to these, these allocated amounts, these final amounts? Well, it's very easy to do so within the allocation detail tab. And what this tab will show us is a number of things. The first is it will have a link for each revenue element. It will have a link to the fair value price record, which lives in our fair value price list. Now, there's a lot of value and benefits to maintaining your fair value price list within NetSuite. Uh, we can dynamically assign the proper fair value based on a certain dimension, such as geography or customer size. So there's a lot of flexibility when it comes to maintaining and having your price list in NetSuite. Um, but that is going to live here and we can easily drill down and view that uh, record within our price list. The other thing, uh, we have base fair values in this case assigned to each of the revenue elements. Uh, those are not, of course, not necessary. Maybe we need to dynamically calculate what the fair value is based on a percentage uh, of what was sold. So common use case I see is maintenance. Maintenance is a lot of times maybe 20% of the software that's sold. Well, we can easily dynamically calculate those kind of fair values um, using the next thing that I want to point out, which is fair value formulas. They work very similar to the Excel-based formulas, but it really allows us to handle uh, very simple to very complex use cases uh, with, you know, the dynamic calculation of fair value. Um, in this case, again, I want to keep it simple. Uh, we're just using our, our list rate here, our, our base fair value, and of course, it's taking quantity into consideration, but we can easily handle those more complex, uh, complex use cases. The next thing I want to point out is the establishing range checking policies. Now, that's very easy to do. It's something, again, you would set up within your fair value price list. But if I did want the calculated fair value to stay within a certain high or low threshold, whether that's based on a dollar amount or a percentage, I can easily do so by establishing those range checking policies. And then ultimately we get to the final result. This is our allocated amount or how much we're going to be recognizing for each of our revenue elements. So I know I was able to, to br briefly talk about some of the highlights, but the point is, is that the NetSuite price book is extremely flexible. Um, NetSuite's automating your, your revenue allocation. We can easily see how it's calculating and arriving to the final result within the allocation detail tab. 
Um, and this saves, again, prospects and customers a lot of time uh, when they are doing these kind of calculations in Excel. Okay, the next thing that I want to talk about are revenue rules. Revenue rules and triggering events. Uh, really, again, automate your revenue policy. It's another important component to automating your revenue policy. And they ultimately define how and when revenue recognition occurs. So based on the revenue rules and the triggers that are assigned, NetSuite is automatically going to create an actual and a forecast revenue plan for each revenue element. The actual plan is what controls the posting of revenue. So let's go ahead and look at that one first, and I'll come back and talk about the forecasting capabilities in NetSuite. So on the plan is where I can see a number of things. Uh, the first, I can see the details of my rule. Now, my rule is defined here, um, and all that information is being sourced um, so that, again, it, it's automating this process. So I can easily see, you know, what is the recognition method? What's the revenue start date? What's the revenue end date? And down below, if I scroll down, I can actually see my revenue schedule. How much revenue are we scheduled or planning to recognize in each period? Now, this is a 12 month contract, um, it's 12 month SaaS item. So we are recognizing approximately $11,000 in each month over the 12 month period, okay? So that gives me some really great flexibility and, and visibility right, uh, right from the start. Now, all of these defaults, I talked to them about them a little bit, um, but such as the revenue rule, right? We have a number of default settings set on the item record that help automate this process. But of course, there are times where um, we need to make changes and, and treat them at the exception basis. So the point is you are able to easily edit an arrangement and make changes if need be. For example, I can change the revenue rule. Uh, I can change the start and end dates. I can even place revenue on hold if needed. So these kind of important inputs can, can be updated during the plan's life cycle. And you can make these changes in bulk as well. If I needed to place revenue on hold for a number of contracts, or if I wanted to update the revenue start date for a number of elements, I can easily make those changes in bulk. So the point is, is that the arrangement and elements are not completely fixed when they come over from the source transaction. You do definitely have the ability to make changes. Now let's talk about the forecasting a little bit. Um, and let's ignore this actual plan. Uh, to save some time, I've already gone ahead and fulfilled our item, but I'll talk about what happens before that actual trigger event of fulfillment in this case. So forecasting. Um, in this scenario, for our professional services, we do not recognize revenue until we actually deliver or fulfill those hours. Um, therefore, until that fulfillment occurs, we would not have an actual plan. We'd simply only have a forecast plan. And that forecast plan allows us to uh, forecast when we expect to deliver those hours. So for example, I have a two month forecast rule assigned because typically we expect to deliver those hours within the first two months of the contract. So by having these forecast plans, we can easily forecast and view when we expect to deliver this revenue. And we have a lot of forecasting reports available where you can see this information. Now, of course, at month end, you can easily reforecast your plan so that the forecasting reporting is up to date with the latest information. Now, again, to save some time um, so that we could get through everything in today's um, demo, I have gone ahead and fulfilled those 200 professional services hours. Now, notice that I have a revenue start and end date of 415, of April 15th. And that is because we actually delivered those hours on the 15th. And so we had, upon fulfillment, NetSuite's going to create the actual plan. And this could also be not only for fulfillment, for, for billing as well. If you have certain items or revenue um, that you don't recognize until you actually bill or based on a percentage completion for project revenue, um, there's a lot of triggering events. This is just an example of, of what this would look like. 
Now, because we recognize in this scenario all of the revenue in full based on when we deliver, you can see that we're going to be we're scheduled to recognize all of our services revenue in the month of April. Okay, so that's just an example of how you can use forecasting plans and when the actual triggering events come into play to generate the actual plan. So, um, moving forward to month end. We are now ready to post our journal entries. So I'm here on the Create Revenue Recognition Journal Entry screen, and down below we can see all of our items. I have it filtered for our customer. Uh, we can see that we have our, our SaaS license uh, for the first month that related revenue waiting to be posted along with that professional services that we're recognizing in full because we delivered those hours in this month. So right away, I can see the items that are waiting to be posted. Now, of course, I'm doing this the manual way uh, for demo purposes, but we also have a way to schedule the revenue recognition journal entries um, so that you wouldn't even need to run this month end process, uh, you know, based on a schedule, whether you want your journal entries posted every six hours, daily, weekly, monthly, whatever it is, uh, we can have that process automated for you. Um, so that from the time we approved the sales order, we could have already had posted revenue to our PL. So we can make this process really as automated and as touchless as needed. Now, I've gone ahead, generated my journal entry, as you can see here. I'll drill in so we can view uh, the journal entry for the amount that we recognized in this period, which is aligning with what we would expect from our actual revenue plans. And what's great is that I can see a link to the source revenue plan. So if I click on the plan here, I will be taken back to the plan screen. And now we can see the journal entry in the posting period. So everything is really integrated, allowing you to drill down from transactions to get back to the journal entry, the arrangements, the revenue elements, and so on. Okay. The next step to this process uh, would be to reclassify our deferred revenue, right? That is the next step to this revenue close process. And this too can be scheduled. Um, now we can see, I have again filtered for my customer and I can see that I have one transaction waiting for us to reclassify and post, which we'll go ahead and do now. So very easily, again, NetSuite's going to tell you exactly what needs to be re reclassified and it will be waiting for you in that queue until you do so. Now, while this is processing, I should mention that there are really three reasons for revenue uh, reclassification. The first one is unbilled receivables. The second one is revenue allocation, which is that carve-in, carve-out adjustment you see here. And the, the third one is currency fluctuation. So anytime you have those three, uh, those three things, you'll probably need to reclassify uh, your, your deferred revenue. And that's what it's going to automatically, as you can see here, calculate the reclassification amount for you. And there are reclassification reports available that provide you with a lot of detailed information about how the reclass journal entry amounts are calculated for each line item. Okay. So NetSuite is smart enough to assist with these reclassifications, and that can be a big assistance since the reclassification process is probably one of the larger asks during the month end process. Now, I want to move forward with reporting, which is key when it comes to automating your revenue policy and having the right visibility to properly manage your revenue recognition. Now, NetSuite has many, many revenue reports, uh, but given the time that we have today, I want to highlight a few of my favorites. So the first report that I want to look at, again, is the Revenue Recognition Forecast Summary Report. A couple things that I can see right away. Uh, right away, I can see the revenue that I've recognized for both our professional services as well as our SaaS license in that first month of our contract. Additionally, I can see what is remaining in our deferred. So what is planned or scheduled revenue for our SaaS license over the course of the next 11 or so months. We can easily see how much revenue we're going to be recognizing as we move forward uh, in, in coming periods and months. 
We can also see what we originally forecasted for our professional services. Now, of course, this would come in to play um, if we hadn't fulfilled those hours in this month, we would be able to easily see that forecast plan, um, but we can still see what we originally forecasted. So looking at the statuses, you know, in a single report, we can see in real time visibility into uh, your scheduled or planned revenue, your forecasted revenue, as well as your recognized revenue. Another point I wanna make is if you did have any revenue that was placed on hold, you'd also be able to see that too. Um, so this is a really great report to run both before and after posting your revenue for the month. Okay, and the last report that I want to show you is the billing and revenue summary report. And I'll go ahead and highlight um, the use case that we are looking at. Um, and this report is really great uh, and is used to track your billing and your revenue for sales orders. So it gives you a really great side-by-side -side view of both your billing and RevRec, uh, which are two of the critical processes, right, that we need to stay on top of. Now, highlighting again the use case, uh, we can easily see, you know, what the sales order amount was, which is 220,000. Uh, 220, we can see how much of that has been billed. We can see, again, how much revenue uh, has been planned, right? Uh, how much has been recognized of that? And then what is sitting in our deferred? Um, so this report is really helpful in calculating, um, you know, not only what we have built, but what we have recognized, again, giving you that side by side view, since those, the billing and revenue processes can be completely independent of one another. Um, so with that, uh, that concludes our revenue recognition demonstration. I hope that you were really able to see today how NetSuite can automate your entire revenue policy and really allow you to easily manage your revenue recognition process through the extensive reporting and automation that's available.